Good evening. Welcome to this special election debate at Tempe City Hall. My name is Taylor Seeley. I'm a reporter for the Arizona Republic and azcentral.com. Election day is May 16th, and Tempe voters will be asked to vote on three ballot propositions. Propositions 301, 302, and 303 all boil down to this. Should Tempe sell 46 acres of city-owned land west of Town Lake to the Arizona Coyotes so they can develop a hockey arena, apartments, and an entertainment district? Tonight, we will hear from supporters and opponents of this deal. Supporting the project is Coyote CEO Javier Gutierrez and Tempe City Councilman Joel Navarro. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Mayor, former Mayor Hugh mm -hmm. Hallman may join us later on. Opposing the project is communications professional Don Penich Thacker and Gail Shanks, founder and owner of Changing Hands Bookstore. Thank you. The purpose of tonight's debate is to give you, the voters, information you need to make an informed decision. The questions come from the Arizona Republic and our readers. They have not been shared with either team. Each side will have two minutes to answer questions and one minute for rebuttals. Both sides have agreed to these rules. We have a lot of questions to get to, so let's please be respectful with time and tone. Voters will be best served if they can hear the arguments fully. With that, we will get started with opening statements. A coin toss determined that Don and Gail will go first for opening statements, and Javier and Joel will go second, or sorry, first for closing, or last for closing arguments. <coughs> go ahead. Good evening. My name is Gail Shanks, and I'm founder and co-owner of Changing Hands Bookstore. I've been a small business owner here in Tempe for 50 years, and I've been very active politically as well. I raised my kids here, and my grandsons are both uh, Tempe school graduates. Unlike the other side, I'm not a professional lobbyist or looking to make a profit. I'm here as a concerned resident. I care about the quality of life for my family and for my neighborhood and the impact that this massive development is going to have on our community. We never asked for it and we want to make sure that it doesn't impinge on our way of life for our precious city. As a business owner, I pay my taxes. I support my employees and other local businesses. And I don't expect our city to give me special favors or tax breaks or taxpayer funded freebies or secret access to upcoming projects. Tonight, we want to talk to you about honesty versus spin trust versus empty promises, and transparency versus sweetheart deals. Ben Franklin once said, half a truth is often a great lie. Tonight, we'll share why we feel voters must reject this contentious <clears throat> proposal that has divided our city and is based on half-truths posed as facts. We'll share real data not rosy campaign promises. Along with my friend and neighbor, Dawn Penich Thacker, herself a longtime volunteer, educator, mother, Five seconds. and small business owner, we will expose those misconceptions and refocus the conversation on what our city's real needs and priorities are. All right, Mr. Gutierrez and Councilman Navarro. Thank you very much. My name is Javier Gutierrez. I'm the president and CEO of the Arizona Coyotes. Thank you so much for hosting this, and I appreciate also the critics of this project being here because we do want to talk about transparency. We do want to talk about leaving this in the hands of the voters. We are here to ask the voters of Tempe to vote yes on Propositions 301, 302, and 303. Why? Because it's the right project, it's the right deal, and we're the right team to execute on it. Why do we say it's the right project? Because it's going to bring jobs. It's going to bring revenue, and it's going to clean up a city-owned hazardous landfill. And most importantly, Tempe taxpayers will not pay for it. As you mentioned, it's, this is about more than just a hockey arena. 
It is a best-in-class urban redevelopment that will have hotels, housing, shops, restaurants, a theater, and yes, be the permanent home of the Arizona Coyotes. As far as this being the right deal, this is the first time that a private owner of a sports team will pay for their own sports arena. Not despite anything that you may hear, both tonight and elsewhere, we are buying the land, we are paying for every single building, and you don't have to pay for it. To maintain it, to, when something breaks, we will pay for it. This is an opportunity for Tempe voters to see a landfill turn into a landmark. And we are the right team to execute on it. This city council, your city council, voted 7-0 to approve the project, to approve the deal, to approve the zoning and the entitlement. We ask you to listen to them, to listen to the former mayors, the former council members, the broad coalition of union leaders, of business leaders, of Tempe Tourism, of Tempe Chamber, of Tempe City leaders. We ask you to vote yes after you hear both sides tonight. All right, thank you. We are gonna start our first question off with Mr. Gutierrez and Councilman Navarro. This is actually a question for both, but we'll start with you guys. Why is this a good or bad deal for residents? Give us your best argument. Sure. Appreciate it. First, um, thank you, obviously, for being here um, to discuss. Listen, this is a great deal, in my opinion. We have been, in my lifetime and, and past, this has just been dirt and it's been a landfill. Um, with a city this size, landlocked, and with the complexities of competing with other cities, we're trying to make our city as viable as possible. Projects like these actually bring revenue within the cities. Even, after, even with a 30-year abatement, we're still receiving revenues coming to the cities at half that. And the thing is, though, those revenues do provide uh, costs for public safety, costs for firefighters, PD, things of roads and things like that, which right now it's doing nothing for us. It's doing nothing for the schools, nothing for anybody. And at the end of the day, if we have to find out that we are on the hook to remediate, the city has to take care of this. And that's to a tune of $72 million. But on top of that, if we do infrastructure and infrastructure improvements, you're talking over $200,000, $200,000 million. That's going to be on the taxpayers. That's why I feel that this project being done by a private developer that is able to do this and own the cost, own the liability to this property to make sure it gets cleaned up, but not only that, to put something in there that's gonna revitalize that area. We talk about Tempe Town Lake, we talk about a two mile course. This is the west end of that lake, all the way to Marketplace. It has a mixed use of variety that makes diversity within the city. Diversity with any city withstands any economic downtime. And I wanna stress that because we wanna diversify our city as best as we can with the time, that, with the limit land that we have. And this is an opportunity to do it. All right, to Ms. Penich Thacker and Gail Shanks. You have one minute for a rebuttal. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, we're actually gonna do two minutes to answer the question first. Why is this a good or bad deal for residents? And then we will do rebuttals. Okay, thank you. Um, well, you know, I think I would kick it off by saying that if something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Most of the concerns that we have as longtime residents of Tempe and that we've heard as we've talked to neighbors and gone around our neighborhoods is that Tempe has real needs values and priorities, and this project doesn't address those. Um, many residents have said to us at the doors and in community info sessions, where did this come from? We didn't ask for this. Gail and I have both served on many boards and commissions for the city over the years, and we often talk about our homeless population, which has been skyrocketing, particularly among seniors and families with young children. We've talked about our roads and traffic that is making life very difficult for the people who already live here. We talk about our schools, which continue to be underfunded and a teacher crisis that is affecting Tempe schools in addition to the rest of the state. What we have never talked about needing is a professional sports arena subsidized by unprecedented property tax breaks. Even the gentleman across the way here cannot deny that there is both an eight year and a 
30-year property tax break built into this deal, Prop 303, that they themselves had said this project cannot go forward without. That is a massive amount of tax dollars not being collected by our city, not addressing our needs for affordable housing, for schools, for hospitals, for all of the things that impact our real lives. And so this is not the right project. We know that we will develop this land and we have an opportunity to do that with a better deal by saying no to this one and going back to the drawing board. All right, you guys have one minute for rebuttal. Let me, let me jump in. First of all, this city does have needs, and it needs revenue. This piece of land has generated zero jobs and zero revenue for decades. That's number one. Number two, we talk about these property tax abatements. One, they are very common economic development tools. In fact, this city council has approved numerous of those jeeplets, 37 along Tempe Town Lake. And when we talk about the cost of that property tax abatement, you are hearing misleading information. There is going to be $800 million of direct financial benefits, and the city council actually approved that, that study and that recommendation from the city staff that said that. The actual cost of the property tax abatement of this property is $115 million to the city of Tempe. That still generates over seven, almost $700 million over the next 30 years. That will meet the needs of this city. All right, one minute. Well, it sounds like, like we're getting some conflicting information from the city, which unfortunately is common in this particular um, topic because the city financial officer is actually the one who put the value of the 30-year tax break at nearly 500 million. Um, but a couple things that I need to correct there. There actually are jobs on this site. It is our current city recycling, waste management, composting. So there are jobs there, but that's not really the point. The point point is, and an economic study that just came out yesterday validated this, any development that goes into that site will generate jobs. And it would be able to do that without the massive tax dollar giveaways that this project relies on and the new taxes that this project will impose on all Tempe businesses, visitors, and residents on the site. And so we will get jobs. We will get development. This is not a special savior project that we can't go without. All right, we've hit on a lot of really interesting talking points. We're gonna get deeper into it. So let's go to our first official question for the Coyotes. The way this proposal is currently structured, half of customer sales tax spent in the district will go toward repaying debt related to infrastructure costs and remediating the land. If money is, spelt, if money is spent elsewhere in Tempe, the sales tax doesn't repay debt. What would you tell voters who are concerned that developing this entertainment district will redirect tax dollars away from the general fund and toward debt related to this project? You want to so I want to be very clear. There are no tax dollars. There are no general fund dollars. There are no dollars other than ours that go into this project. This project is going to generate revenue that then will take on the debt that is necessary to clean up this landfill. That, those are gonna be private bonds whose sole guarantee is just our land that we're buying and our real estate that we're building. Yes, you have mentioned the sales tax on site and the taxes that are generated on site. That is capped, but that is the city's liability. Taxpayers do not have to pay for that because they're being generated by private land, private real estate, and whose sole guarantor is our land and is our private real estate. And so for us, when you think about the opportunity to clean up a landfill that is a city-owned hazard, to create jobs and to create revenue for things like homelessness, for early childhood education, without the taxpayers having to pay for that, that is an incredible deal. And I disagree, and it's a mischaracterization that there is a recent report that actually went out and didn't include any of the other uses, only included the uses of the arena and the practice facility. There's $1.8 million more of investment on our part that were never included in this report of an entity that we hadn't heard of. 
But we have heard of ASU. We have heard of the W.P. Carey School. We have heard of the Seidman Institute. And their report that was also issued yesterday showed no tax dollars will be used in order to build any part of this development. And no tax dollars are at risk. And so when we talk about having the general fund be utilized, that's just simply a mis a characterization of this. I want to clarify one thing, though. The sales tax would be um, to pay back the, don the bonds, the sales tax that is on site, that customers pay. A, a portion of that portion. is going to go towards debt related to the utilities, remediating the land necessary to begin the private construction of the arena. The, the revenue generated by us buying the land and us building these buildings will create revenue for the city. I think what's lost in that is that the city will retain the other component of that, the other revenue that's generated, and that's almost $7 million a year for the next 30 years. The city will not have had to come out of pocket, nor will it guarantee any of those private bonds and private debt. So yes, we've said a portion of the on-site taxes will be contributed for the city's liability that it currently has. But in the meantime, it won't guarantee it, it won't be on the balance sheet of the city. It won't need any dollars coming out of the general fund or any dollars to be raised from taxpayers. Again, ASU confirmed it. There are no tax dollars being used to build any part of this development. We think that is a very good deal and unlike any other sports and entertainment district in the history of Arizona. Okay, one minute, what do you guys say to that? One thing that's important to say now because I imagine it might be be referenced many times this evening. All of the studies that the other side is going to reference tonight were commissioned by the pro arena side and paid for by the pro arena side. There are many entities within ASU that are, are for pay, for profit. You tell them what you want the findings to show and they figure out a way to show what you need. And so I just want to put that out there. Um, what the unaffiliated, unpaid for Grand Canyon Institute, which while you haven't heard of it, is actually very well known and well renowned in Arizona and nationally, actually found that any development that would go into this site that didn't give up the tax revenue this project would and doesn't split the revenue between the lion's share going to the developer and only a small portion coming back to the city that any development would do better and be a net gain rather than what they call a net drain on Tempe. All right, we are going to go to our next question to Ms. Penich Thacker and Gail Shanks. The city currently puts resources toward maintaining the 46 acres of city-owned land west of Town Lake. This is the only proposal in recent memory to develop the land that could generate revenue. Why not develop it now, given that the land is not currently making the city money? I think I can answer that. Um, that piece of land that has been described repeatedly, not only tonight, but on signs around the city, is being called a landfill, and a toxic landfill at that. There is no toxic substances in that landfill, as far as anyone can tell. And in fact, over the weekend, I think Mr. Navarro even mentioned that he doesn't know if it's lined or unlined, and if something is leaking or not leaking. And up until this time, and currently, that piece of property is a city-owned and city-run entity. It has offices there. There is a small portion that is a compost pile. And if you've watched TV or if you've looked at pictures that our opponents have shown you, they are showing you over and over and over again pictures of a compost heap. I can just show you a picture of the amount of space that is the compost heap. And this area right here is being touted as this 46 acres of landfill. That is not the case. If that was the case, 150 employees from the city of Tempe would not be working there. They would be having lawsuits against the city for being in a toxic environment to w where they have to go to work every day. That is not the case. Before this t 
time people work there for years and years. There have been many, many, many people who have worked there. Before that, it was a gravel and sand pit, and people were there when there was no toxicity as well. So I think when we're talking about this, we're really talking about a misconception. OK. I want to say that the Arizona Republic reporting has shown that studies have found um, garbage and debris consistent with a landfill at that site, but that we have not independently verified whether these chemicals are toxic. We're going to go to the next question. This is for both sides. Again, we'll do two minute answers for each. Oh, get sorry. A yes, my bad. One minute rebuttal. Yeah, thank you. Um, first off, yes, we know it's a landfill. It's, it's designated as a landfill. We don't know the toxicity of that landfill. Over 70 years, I have no idea who put what in that landfill. And the thing is, you guys cannot be for certain saying that it's not toxic. That's misrepresentation of that place. I think of it as landfill, but it's a brownfield is what it is. And those things have to be remediated. Remember Tempe Marketplace had to, had to be remediated because it was a brownfield site. The fact that there was junkyards and there's oil and that had to be cleaned up. In that thing with Tempe Marketplace, they got a 40 year giblet deal to do that. These are deals that we use to make something more viable. Look at Marketplace as it is right now. And we had people at the very beginning say, oh, an outdoor mall is never gonna survive in Arizona. It does. The thing is, it does. And the thing we've seen this over at Arizona Mills, and that Arizona Mills on 11 year giblet deal to make that piece of dirt happen is happening and still happening today. And that thing is an indoor mall. Indoor malls across the country are failing. All right, a question for both sides. You guys began to hit on this, so now it's official. Two studies out this week painted two very different pictures about what this entertainment district would mean for Tempe. One by the nonprofit Grand Canyon Institute found that the project would be a net drain, not a net gain for the city. The other, out of ASU, said the project would generate hundreds of millions in revenue for Tempe. The ASU study was paid for by supporters of the development, while critics say that the GCI study paints an incomplete picture. Which one should voters trust and why? Let's go to Penich Thacker and Gail Shanks. Um, well, if, if I am presented with information that was bought and paid for by the person trying to get me to buy it, I would definitely believe the information that was not purchased by the salesman himself. Um, so the Grand Canyon Institute uh, put out their report, and there was a lot of findings in there. Concerned citizens felt not only that it validated a lot of our concerns about the what we're not going to see for how much we're having to invest in the subsidies for this proposed development, but it actually went further than that, confirming or even painting an even bleaker picture. One statistic that the Grand Canyon Institute found is that for every $2.70 that the developer gets to pocket from Tempe tax dollars, the city itself will only get to keep $1.00. Now, you heard that Gail has run our beloved Changing Hands bookstore for 50 years, and she made the comment that if she, as a business, only got to keep $1 and had to give away nearly $3 on every transaction, she would go belly up, she would go bankrupt. And so I think that that's what Tempe voters need to think about, that not only are we not collecting this developer is not paying the bills for 30 years, even though they're going to be using our services, using our police, using our roads, using our waste and recycling pickup and so much more. They're not paying bills. That doesn't mean the bills don't exist. My kids also don't think that there's an air conditioning bill. I can tell you that, but I can tell you I sure have to pay it every month. So when we look at this study, it said not only that this development will not be a net gain, but that a future project, even a little bit down the road, that doesn't have subsidies and doesn't have to tax us, will give us just as much revenue, if not more. All right, two minutes to answer the question. I appreciate the chance to finally address this GCI Institute report. First of all, it was not independent. And why? Because one of the leading critics of this project actually admitted that she spoke to the author prior to it beginning and during its commencement. So it is not independent, number one. Number two, it failed to address any of the revenue outside of the arena 
and the music venue. So all the shops, all the dining, all of the hotels, all of the apartments, somehow they're not going to generate any revenue according to this project, according to this report rather. And then most importantly, this report advocated that Tempe taxpayers should pay for the cleanup of that landfill, that the city should issue $200 million in bonds when you bond it out would cost $400 million. That is what this report is advocating. And so when we think about what is the right thing for Tempe, Tempe taxpayers paying for this project is not at all what should happen. The cleanup of this landfill, and yes, it is a landfill, and we had 40 boring reports that showed us that, that there was decomposing toxins threatening the groundwater of Tempe. And no matter what you say against that, that is what is happening. Toxin and methane. And there are individuals that are working on that site that actually had problems working on that site. One was Vice Mayor Jen Adams, who said that after working there for 10 years, over the course of that time, she would get headaches from it. This GCI report simply comes up with a solution that isn't the right thing for Tempe. The ASU report, which yes, analyzed not only our report that we submit as part of our RFP, but also the city's own independent report. All right, I wanna again say the Arizona Republic reporting has shown that the GCI is a nonpartisan, nonprofit think tank. They maintain that their report does not have bias. Um, the report did not give recommendations. However, it did explore scenarios where the city would fund remediation and what that would look like. Let's go to one minute rebuttals. Can I go? I just want to say that no matter how many times you say this is not going to cost the Tempe residents any money, you're wrong. If you give a 30 year tax abatement, 30 years of paying no property taxes, 30 years, $500 million could be collected in that amount of time. That's $500 million that don't go for projects that are near and dear to our hearts. Things that Don mentioned earlier about social service projects, our schools, our roads, our first responders. I'm really sorry, but $500 million to me is not nothing. And I don't know about the woman who objected to this report. We have no idea who she is or who you're talking about. And you're welcome to bring people like that up. But I think without any evidence, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I just feel like we, are, we should be talking to each other as opposed to opposing each other. Thank you. I want to clar clarify for voters that a giplet does not um, mean no tax revenue at all, no property tax at all. It replaces it with a lower excise tax. Um, additionally, the $500 million figure represents um, an abatement that is beyond just Tempe, but to other government entities as well. Right. And then one minute for you guys. Go ahead. All I can say is this. Police and fire support this project because it does help us out. The fact that this is a landfill, the fact that it has a mulch pile on that landfill. Have you ever been to a mulch fire? I've been to three, and that thing ignites. The reason why I have asthma, and we had as grins about a headache, is because of the mulch fires. Because when I get in there, I can only wear my SCBA so long, and then I have to get out without it on, and then go back and forth. Those things burn for days if they're not done right. So the thing is, we're cleaning up something that is a true hazard, and I know for a fact. All right, our next question is for the Coyotes. Given the Coyotes' history in Glendale, some residents are concerned that the team won't be able to pay off bond debt taken out to clean up the land and public infrastructure, such as utility lines. Why should residents trust you to deliver what you've promised? And what assurances do they have that you won't be able to walk away and leave the city with the bill? So, so I I, I'm glad you mentioned that last part, which is the assurances. We are buying the land. But most importantly, the moment we put a shovel in the ground, the city negotiated a $40 million non-refundable deposit immediately that we would not walk away from. In addition, the moment we put a shovel in the ground, it is our money and it is our financing that is at stake. 
So that's number one. As far as Glendale, thank you for raising that issue because we need to clarify this. The city of Glendale invoked their one year out of a lease that they broke and went to a year to year when we told them we would not agree to a 20 year lease extension. And that is what their city manager in a recent Arizona Republic article actually confirmed because the manager of that arena signed that same deal and their city manager said it was a deal that we chose not to accept. But you're talking about an owner in Alex Morello who's been in business for 40 years in highly regulated businesses like banking, like media, like food, like gaming, and never once has been in bankruptcy and never once has lost a business. He's also someone who had an exhaustive financial underwriting by your city council, by your city staff, and also by ASU prior to us playing there at Mullet Arena. You're talking about someone who has been in up and down economic cycles and has never walked away, and in fact, actually invested $30 million to be here in Tempe on a temporary basis. The reality is you're talking about a successful businessman in highly regulated businesses who's already put his money to be here and who told Glendale, this is where we want to be. And they were then the ones who began besmirching this organization and that individual. All right, one minute. It's true, Glendale has been very vocal, both the vice mayor and the city manager, in talking directly to Tempe, putting op-eds even in our local newspapers saying, Tempe, we made the mistakes. Don't let history repeat itself. Um, and it's also true, as Mr. Gutierrez said, that they wanted the Coyotes to leave because they had grown, in the city manager's words, so frustrated over the lack of payment, the non-payment, the late fees. Um, one thing that the vice mayor of Glendale said that really struck, stuck with me was that a leopard can't change his spots, and it seems that we should be concerned that neither can a coyote. Mr. Morella, unfortunately, has a long legacy of not paying bills and lawsuits against financial misdealings in California and Florida currently where he is being sued in both those states, as well as Nevada. He has already started lawsuits here in Arizona, and those are the unaccounted for costs to Tempe, constant lawsuits. All right, opponents have displayed signs calling the Coyote's owner a, quote, corrupt billionaire and have used campaign slogans that suggest Tempe will get shortchanged if they vote yes. A development of this scale requires business acumen as well as capital. Why, in your view, would it be wrong for Tempe to partner with a billionaire? And what reason do you have for believing Tempe would be shortchanged? The reason so many residents are concerned is because of this organization's history and the owner's history in particular. So I've already made mention of the fact that he has a legacy of what are, as the signs say, corruption, because these are financial misdealings. This is toxic work environment, currently being sued for pushing out female leadership, for refusing to pay workers in Nevada wages that they had been paid for. The current lawsuit against him in Miami Beach is for letting a building that he owned fall into such disrepair that Miami Beach had to pay their own money to demolish it. These are all facts on his record that anyone could and should look up. TempeFacts.com has all of this. Um, and with someone of that record, Tempe residents are rightly concerned. Why would someone suddenly come to our city after burning bridges in Tucson, in Glendale, and suddenly do right for Tempe? It doesn't make any sense. And on the financial aspect of it and the acumen that you speak of, done in Bradstreet, which again is an unaffiliated, not paid for by the pro arena side, um, credit rating firm, rated all of Mr. Morello and ice hockey and the Coyotes as 
moderate to high risk, recommending loan amounts dramatically lower than what would be needed in order to get this project done here in Tempe. So the reason we're concerned is because we studied up and looked at what history has to teach us about this organization, about the relationships that they have in other cities, and why it is that after 30 years of existence, they're still going around trying to find a home, trying to find a place that will have them. Tempe is smarter to vote no and find a developer and a partner that will listen to us, respect our city and our tax dollars. One minute. So I appreciate uh, Ms. Pennick Thatcher actually talking about facts and I'll start by saying one, um, you have the wrong Morello in Miami. That is not Alex Morello, so perhaps you can do your research a little bit better. Second, the Dun & Bradstreet report, all I have to say is there was an exhaustive financial um, underwriting done by this staff using third parties. And this staff recommended to this city council, and this city council said it's 7-0, to approve this developer, this project, this entitlement. And as I mentioned again, that same exhaustive review of Alex Morello and his financial wherewithal and his business acumen was done by ASU prior to us being in Mullet. As far as Glendale, again, yes, you should listen to and not copy what Glendale wanted because Glendale put its taxpayers on the hook. They made them pay for that arena and they made them pay to renovate it and they are guaranteeing it. And that is not what's happening in this project. All right, this next question is for both sides. We received several questions from voters, which by the way, I just have to say it was really inspiring to see all the questions flow in from Tempe residents. It made me very happy and proud to be a Tempe resident myself. But we had several questions asking this, if not this development, this project, what? Do voters have a reason to believe a better project for this site will come along in the future? Let's go to your guys'. I think we have every reason to believe that there is a better project than the one that we are being presented tonight and for the last few months. We think there is an enormous opportunity for us to find something that works for the whole city, that doesn't bring the divisiveness that this particular project is bringing. This project, this project was started three years ago behind closed doors. The public had no input. We didn't even know that professional hockey was a possibility in Tempe until recently. In addition to the fact that we weren't engaged in any way as residents here, and we had serious issues, as we've mentioned, with airport, traffic, neighborhoods, lots of concerns that have never been addressed. There were no public meetings up until last November. The only time the public could ask questions was at two public meetings that were held before and after Thanksgiving, a time of year when families are in town, when businesses are trying to keep their doors open, and that was the only time that we were able to go to the city council, ask questions, and hopefully get answers. So is there a better project? We believe there are numbers of better project, and what we want is the city council to go back to the drawing board, issue an RFP that many people can apply for, not just one that was designed for one specific entity, the Bluebird Coyotes, and we want that project to be full on looked at by everyone in the city with the opportunity for many developers to respond to, as opposed to just one. All right, two minutes. Respectfully, I disagree. Um, there has been numerous community input on this project. This has been going on for about over a year and a half. We have been talking about this exhaustively, um, not only with the council, but out with our community. And I'm sorry that if people did not see it or understand these, these platforms and where they were at, we try to do our best as a city to make sure that those things get taken care of and get out there. Since 1996, offers on that development has been trying to transpire to do something with that dirt. Nobody 
has taken that offer because of the liability of that land. It's a hard thing to do. But what your guys are offering is that we do it, the taxpayers do it. And to do it for what? And what are we going to use it for? To create what type of revenue that will generate the type of revenue that we're projected to get from this? ASU has done an exhaustive study with this. ASU is an is a, a institution that we all cherish, that we live at in Marabella. We chose to be part of those programs and part of those entities because we live in. I'm a council member who is uh, 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 astonishingly opposed to it, works for ASU. But the thing is, though, we did our due diligence as a council. We weren't all there at the beginning. We worked so hard because we wanted to make sure that the taxpayers were not on the hook of this deal. And when this thing got done at the end of the day, and beyond when, when another council member left, who is, who is probably one of the most instrumental pe uh, people on your side that's telling critics how this is a bad deal, she wasn't part of those deals at the very end. The fact that I had seven council members, seven DRC members agree to this deal because of the information that we got, because of the due diligence we did for our community. You elected us to do that. And then, the, then you think that we're not doing our jobs. And you have every right to question us. And we, we need that question. But at the end of the day, we're trying to represent you guys in the best that we can. I can't please you on what you want out of this. I can't change your mind about this billionaire or that billionaire. All I can say is pick your favorite billionaire. The only thing we can do is make sure that there's a safeguard for the city, that at the end of the day, we're not holding the bag if this thing were to go downhill. All right, one minute. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we had a miscommunication there. Um, you know, uh, it's tough to hear a, a council member say, sorry, we can't make you all happy, because that's actually not what anyone is asking for right now. We're asking for this to be able to go back to the drawing board and have actual community input, because it's not for me or Gail or any group of seven people or any one billionaire to say what should be in our last remaining plot of land. I've lived in Tempe in a long time. We don't even get new swing sets or a new bike lane without there being multiple ways for the community to give input. But we didn't get that with this. So what we want is not some better idea that belongs to me, but for this to get rejected so we can go back to the drawing board, solicit community input, which is what Mayor Woods vowed will happen when rejected, and find a project that does meet needs that we have as well as brings in revenue, of course we all want that, and we can get it. All right, one minute. I'm just going to say this. This um, piece of dirt, even when I was on council, um, has been discussed of many opportunities of what it can do and what we can try to do, it. from parks to grass, which would probably be the most cheapest thing, to something that was proposed of bringing in a vegetarian arboretum that had its own actually atmosphere to create rain and use lake waters, which is a tremendous idea. And we tried to work with those entities because we saw the connection of what is a benefit for our community. Although the park and the, the proposal for this bio, um, sphere kind of atmosphere thing that was done didn't transpire economic downturns in 2008 the fact that that uh, dirt had to be remediated um, so we had discussions on these things in fact i've had neighborhood discussions on a variety of things including that property and at the end of the day when we're a community and we see pieces of property because we're landlocked we have to compete with other cities out there to try to make sure that we have the diversity that we need and in order to do that we try to facilitate that input as best we can all right, our next question. The city of Phoenix sued Tempe over what it believes to be a violation of rules related to building homes near Sky Harbor Airport. The Coyotes have since countersued Phoenix. Is Tempe at risk of being locked in a costly legal battle if this deal is approved? And how should the Sky Harbor debacle factor into voters' decisions? Thank you for the chance to address this issue. Uh, first and foremost, let me answer directly, Tempe will not be on the hook in large part because the Tempe City Council uh, negotiated indemnification of any lawsuits by us. So Tempe will not be on the hook for any of that. But most importantly, we're sitting in these chambers and in November, the CEO of Sky Harbor walked down the aisle and said, we have come to successful negotiation with this developer, us, and we will not oppose that project. What the lawsuit that Phoenix is doing is because they want to have unfettered expansion at Sky Harbor and now allow you, the Tempe voters, and you, the Tempe Council, to have a say in it. 
They also want to stop any residential development in the noisy part, the 65 decibel noise contour. That's against the IGA. And the reality is this. We sued them because Phoenix has a history of bullying Tempe. And we were not going to stand for it. The reality is that we countersued for this project because we think that it's nothing but a political stunt. And they said as much when they asked us to lean on the Tempe City Council to get them to the table in order to amend an IGA that's been in place since 1996 and was affirmed in 2013 when the Sky Harbor itself said multifamily was allowed. Nonetheless, the lawsuit is asking the judge to prevent land use changes that are crucial to the advancing of this project. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what happens if the judge weighs in not in your favor? Um, and, and again, the idea of the city being locked in litigation for whoever knows how long. I mean, that's important to voters. It should be important to voters, but this is the reality. We have a development agreement, we have zoning, and we have entitlements that have been approved by this council. And when they are ratified by voter approval, we're going to be moving forward. There is not a court that will do that taking of a zoning approval already. And Phoenix understands that, which is why they're using this as political leverage now. And that is what came out in our discussions and on our conversations when we actually came to an agreement. You got me to go. This curiously is another one of those examples, I think, of us looking at our city and thinking about jet noise and airplanes flying over our heads. We have an amazing aviation commission. And they're knowledgeable. The head of it is a pilot who's flown for 40 years. And they have been sounding alarm bells about this deal since it was first discussed. Unfortunately, their input wasn't sought, and they were actually rebuked from presenting their concerns to the council. Same with the Transportation Commission, by the way. The Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association have said this development is dangerous and they've been ignored and Sky Harbor has now filed the lawsuits because they couldn't get through to the council about what the issues were. And I think, again, when we're thinking about the quality of life in our city, I am asking myself if anyone that I know would want to go to a venue, to an expensive restaurant, and sit outside with an airplane flying over their heads once a minute. There is only 400 feet between the projected top of the condos that you want to build and the wheels of the airplane that are going to be leaving Sky Harbor Airport and returning to Sky Harbor Airport. In my mind, that is not a safe condition for people, nor do I think it is safe for our city at large. So, even if you're not bothered by increased jet noise, even if you're not concerned by safety risks, at least consider whether or not you want Tempe tax dollars going to never-ending lawsuits. I mean, we are talking about a lawsuit now. The rest of the city is going to be embroiled in this, and I think we have to talk about how much our taxes are going to go to pay for lawyers to deal with this issue. Um, that actually leads us great into uh, perfectly into our next question from a voter for both sides. Will Tempe residents pay additional taxes now or ever for this entertainment district? What do we need to know about the funding breakdown? Let's go to the Coyotes. Sure. Thank you so much for that. So this is the way the deal works. We are going to buy this land. We're going to pay $50 million. And as I mentioned, the day that we put a shovel on the ground, we're going to wire $40 million non-refundable to the city. We will then remediate and put public infrastructure on this landfill. We will then pay for every single building that you have seen, all of those renderings. And then, yes, we are asking for a 30-year tax abatement for the arena, the theater, and the practice facility in eight. So the breakdown is this. Those bonds, which are private bonds, because they're backed only by our land, only by our real estate, will go to the remediation. There will be taxes that are generated on site, half of which will go to the city, and the other half the city has decided to contribute as a portion 
of their responsibility, their liability. But again, backed by us, no taxpayer is going to pay. So it's a 50-50 split capped at $240 million. Then there's a voluntary surcharge that we are going to impose on our customers. If you go onto the district and buy a pizza or a ticket or stay at the hotel, you will pay 1% to 2% on that sales tax. If you don't go onto the district, you won't ever pay it. I want to be very clear. There are no taxes that are going to affect any person in Tempe. There are no property tax increases. There are no special taxes other than coming onto the site and paying a voluntary surcharge. You don't have to come onto the district in order to do so. As far as these Jeeplets, again, very common. In fact, there are multiple entities and developments in Tempe that never pay taxes, including, I believe, Mirabella, the home of one of our speakers here, that is a high-end apartment that never pays taxes, right? 99-year property tax abatement for the State Farm Office right next to our project. All right, two minutes. Um, well, first, I neither Gail nor I live in Mirabella, so I don't know who that's. Maybe you, Taylor. I don't know. But um, I think what's important to talk about is that at the macro level, we don't want a community that takes an attitude of love it or leave it. If you don't like it, just don't go there. That's not who Tempe is. That's not who we've ever wanted to be. And so that kind of attitude to our last beautiful remaining piece of land on the Salt River um, is, is really, you know, really off-putting to hear. But what's important is that, you know, there's a reason that the Goldwater Institute has described giplets as crony corporate welfare that shifts the tax burden onto existing tax-paying residents and businesses and guts local budgets. So when you think about gutting the city budget because one developer is not pitching in for 30 years, come on, we've all been on this planet a, a few years, right? What happens when the city does need more money to do something that the developer has not pitched in for? What about when we have to repair those roads? What about when our water crisis gets to a head and now prices have to go up? They are indemnified from having to pay property taxes. I mean, really, we're all grown-ups. We all pay our bills. We all know better than to believe in this kind of it, no risk, no cost. What in life is really like that? Um, developer surcharges, community facilities, district, voluntary, all of that are just slick words for new taxes because guess who lives on this site? Tempe taxpayers. Who is gonna? Who is supposed to go shopping there? We are not supposed to shop there. We are not supposed to go there so that we don't end up paying for it. It's an unrealistic representation and it will cost us in the end. One minute. Yeah, no, listen, giblets have been used across the state as a tool. The legislator, legislators have, de have designed it that way to inspire growth and, and development. We're using a tool that's out there. We've used this tool multiple times throughout the city, but not only this city, every city uses this tool. The Goldwater Institute, if we were doing anything unscrupulous, they would be all down us on this thing. So we haven't heard anything from the Goldwater. Make sure that we were doing our part as a city to make sure we're not violating that because we want to be good stewards of our tax money. We can disagree on this project if, if that's what it comes down to. I see it a different way. I see that we used something to get something that we obviously would not have gotten in the first place. We're taking a piece of dirt, we're remediating it on their own dime, not on our dime. I see that as a win. As compared to the Tempe marketplace, when that bond was uh, uh, distributed, that's on the taxpayers. The fact that we did that, we thought that's a good idea to inspire growth, growth within the city. My God, the lake would never have been the lake because of the stuff that's happening right now, but that has been the tremendous growth of what we're seeing within the downtown that you enjoy. One minute. 
Well, I think the repetition of how many tax breaks and how many property tax breaks have been used already in Tempe is actually, to my mind, making the opposite point. That's right. We have given too many of these massive property tax breaks away to do it yet again with an area of our community, a part of town that no longer requires incentivizing. What has not been said about giplets is that these are a tool used to incentivize land that is is not desirable. The whole reason the coyotes are fighting to be here is because of how desirable and valuable this land is. And so I think it's, folks have lost their appetite for giving massive property tax breaks to billionaires who could afford to do this without pushing the burden back onto us. All right, and with that, we need to go to closing statements. So let's go to Don and Gail. Thank you so much. You've heard tonight why so many Tempe residents are concerned and voting no when our ballots arrive later this week. One side is asking you to listen to experts and neighbors, economists, pilots, city leaders who have already had experiences with this organization. Their side is asking you not to listen to experts unless they've paid them and just to trust them. What you've seen here tonight is that there will be many issues, economic and cultural, plaguing our city for decades to come if we were to move forward with this project. Instead, by voting no, we create an opportunity. We can vote no on this and go back to the drawing board with our city council, with our neighbors, solicit community input, have a transparent process for getting new proposals in create a project that meets our needs and our priorities without demanding that we give up so much in exchange for so little from the developer. We can come up with a project that is accountable to taxpayers, that brings in revenue, and importantly, that everyone can enjoy, that everyone is welcome at. There is no such thing as a free lunch and in this case, there is no such thing as a free arena. We ask that you vote no so that we can restart this process, get a fresh start as a community, and come up with better proposals for our last remaining chunk of land. And we invite anyone to go back and see more of the information we've shared here today at tempefacts.com. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for allowing us to be here today. Tempe is our home. We play here. We had the most amazing season and the best NHL fan experience. And what we're asking for you is to say yes, but also to listen to your friends, to your neighbors, to your community leaders. Mayor Corey Woods called this the best sports deal in the history of Arizona. You had a unanimous vote by this city council you have 45 years of mayors, the current and previous four, who have all said yes to this project. You have union leaders, business leaders, Tempe Chamber, Tempe Tourism. You have almost every single former council member, except one, saying this is the right project, this is the right deal, and telling you, Tempe voters, to join them, your neighbors, your leaders, in saying yes to propositions 301, 302, and 303. It's going to bring jobs and revenue. It's gonna clean up a landfill and you're not going to pay for it. And yes, there is risk for us, for us to take it on. And there is going to be significant benefits to Tempe, actually $808 million worth over the next 30 years. So again, listen to your leadership listen to your neighbors, listen to your friends, and say yes on Propositions 301, 302, and 303. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for sharing your side. And with that, we are done. I want to thank everyone, both sides, for coming on debating this issue. This is important for voters. Um, if voters have not had certain questions answered, I encourage you guys to visit the, the Arizona Republic newspaper, azcentral.com. My, uh, my colleague Sam Kamak is doing fantastic coverage of this issue, and I um, 
I encourage you to support local journalism, perhaps by a subscription to the Arizona Republic. Thank you.